Did you see what Diane Feinstein did? Did everybody see the stuff? Did you get a chance to see that? World's mm-hmm. greatest babysitter, Diane Feinstein. <laughs> <laughs> Diane Feinstein, she is 85, right? I think so. Hey, Suri, how old is Diane Feinstein? Oh, Suri's just giving me the cold shoulder. Again. What the fuck? Hey, Suri. How old is Diane Feinstein? 85, 85. you were right. 85. Okay. And um, I'm not an ageist. Uh, I don't think that you being too old means you can't be. There are certain jobs I don't want old people doing. Like, I don't, nobody wants to see an 85 year old fireman, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, I'm coming to save you. Oh, hang on. My God. The gout. <laughs> My big toe's on fire. <laughs> um, you know, I don't want to see an 85 year old bricklayer or, a, you know, unless he's some kind of a Charles Atlas kind of a maniac who enjoys that kind of thing. But mm-hmm. I don't know anybody. I know a lot of bricklayers. They're ready to quit when they're about 25 years old. <laughs> that is a hard job that is a hard 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 job so let's get to the story diane feinstein got confronted by some young children uh and d- she did not handle it well uh so i'll play it for you and um Wow. Uh, you know, I, we showed you the video. I, I, I might even show it to you later on in the show about when, when her own constituents confronted her about being for single payer. And of course, she lied to them. She said, well, if single payer means a complete takeover of health care by the government, I'm not there yet. Of course, what she does is she cr- paints a straw man. Nobody's saying the government's going to take over health care. The government's going to pay for health care. <laughs> That's the big, big difference. <laughs> anyway, so she, uh, Diane Feinstein is a liar. Because she she knows better than that. She knows that that's not what it is. So she lied to people. She gaslighted her own constituents, which is another form of lying. And um, and now I'm going to this videotape will show you that she is truly a horrible person. And I don't you know, usually I, uh, I get so emotional when I watch videos like this, that a lot of invective flows out of my mouth. I don't think it will this time, because I don't think there's anything I need to say that will that would make anyone realize what a hor- more horrible person Diane? there's nothing i can say that's worse than what she's doing how about that so here we go let's watch watch this go in and share this letter and we're gonna do it all together yeah. share it in front of feinstein okay. we're asking her to vote on yes on, on the green, green new deal, deal. Oh my God, they're darling. so these are adorable children who want oh, diane sweet. feinstein to vote yes on the green new deal and they're children, and they're involved. And by the way, it affects them. So it doesn't affect Diane Feinstein. She's 85 years old. She'll be dead before climate change really affects everybody, which is, you know, within the next 12 years. Hey, do you remember all the policy ideas you drew up and sent a letter about when you were a kid? <laughs> yeah. I, know, I mean, I, seriously, shout out to these kids. I never did that as a kid. Never. These kids are doing it. That's freaking awesome. And that makes her response that much more horrible. Okay, let's, when I watch, here we go, let's watch. We are trying to ask you to vote yes on the Green New Deal. Please. Okay, I'll tell you what. We have our own Green New Deal. Some scientists have said that we have 12 years to turn this around. Well, it's not going to get turned around in 10 years. What we can do is just... Can you believe she said that? Well, it, that's not going to happen. No, that's what scientists tell us need to happen. Yeah, that's not gonna. And she says it like she's the grown-up. Isn't that weird how she says it like she's being the mature grown-up one? Mm -hmm. No, this is irresponsible. You might only get to be on this planet until you're 17, so live it up, kids. Vote for me (laughs) when you're old enough. Until then, I don't give a shit. That's the height of irresponsibility. That's what we when I this is what we used to make fun of Fox News about. But here it is, the leader of the one of the leaders of the Democratic Party. 30 year senator. She sounds just as dumb as anybody ever talking about climate change. Well, that's not going to happen. No, the scientists have already said we only have 12 years to do this. That's not going to happen. 
That's crazy that she said that, right? In, in, in an indignant way. Isn't that nuts that she said that? Well, what's nuts is she didn't, she wasn't responsive to them in a attentive, like, let me hear what you're going to say. Like, she didn't appreciate that they were there immediately. I, like, I, it's, it's odd. So let me, let's, you know what? Let me play the rest of it and then we'll comment. I'll try not to stop it, but I, I can't. Start it again, can you? I can't make promises. I, I might, I might, I might stop it. Go in and hear this letter and we're going to do it all together. Yeah. Share it in front of Feinstein. Okay. If we're asking her to vote yes on the Green New Deal. deal. We are trying to ask you to vote yes on the Green New Deal. Please. Okay, I'll tell you what. We have our own Green New Deal. Some scientists have said that we have 12 years to turn this around. Well, it's not going to get turned around in 10 years. What we can do Senator, if this doesn't get turned around in 10 years, you're looking at the faces of the people who are going to be living with these consequences. The government is supposed to be for the people and by the people and... All you know what's people. interesting about this group is I've been doing this for 30 years. I know what I'm doing. You come in here and you say it has to be my way or the highway. I don't respond to that. I've gotten elected. I just ran. I was elected by almost a million votes. Talking to children. And I know what I'm doing. So, you know, maybe so shut people up. should listen a little bit. I hear what you're saying, but we're the people who voted you. You're supposed to listen to us. That's your, How old are your you job. How old I'm are 16. You? I well, can't you didn't vote. vote for me. Well, she, I'm she voted. It doesn't matter. We're the ones well, who are going to be impacted. It doesn't matter. We're going to be the ones who are impacted. Yeah. 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 Are impacted. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. I have seven grandchildren. I understand it very well. Senator, the cost of and not taking this action is far higher than the cost of what the Green New Deal will be. And there is what? enormous popularity for this bill around okay. the whole country. Here's and we're asking you to be brave proposing. and do this for us and, and for your grandchildren. Sure. Get enough for okay. everybody. I'm trying to do the best I can, which was to write a responsible resolution. Any plan that, that doesn't take bold, okay. transformative okay. action is not going to be what we need. We well, need your you know better than I do. So I think one day you should run for the Senate. Great. And then you do it your way. But by that time, you. in the meantime, by that time, there's gonna I be just, a big problem. I just want- in the meantime, I'm going to keep getting it wrong. Like I've gotten it wrong for the last 30 years. <laughs> and these kids are the ones who are going to pay the price. Now, uh, I hope anybody didn't bring any liquid in here, because if you get in any on me, I'll start melting. <laughs> <laughs> this is horrible. Uh, uh, there's a little bit more. A big you. Yeah, that was the- she just won a big election, so why don't you go pound sand? You didn't, you're 16, you didn't vote for me. Get the fuck out of here. Did you see that? That was literally a parody of a politician. I'll quote the brilliant Eddie Cochran song, Summertime Blues. I'd like to help you some, but you're too young to vote when he goes to uh Yeah, that's like a joke. She's like a, a joke. She's the living personification of a joke. That's that's who Diane Feinstein is. She's a per- personification of a joke, except because we have such a rigged political system in the United States. She's my senator in the bluest of blue states. People voted for her instead of an actual person who represents people. Who the hell is she representing? She's even, I don't represent kids. I don't represent you. You should run. Wow. Wow. Uh, my heart goes out to all the Diane Feinstein's interns who had to stay extra late to make voodoo dolls of each one of these kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here, she's literally... Well, you know what? You, you want to really, see... A, you know, Jay, I just, just want to say that you can really see her maternal and grandmotherly instincts come out in that exchange. Oh, my God. <laughs> in the worst way, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, not in a good way. So she's literally... They, make a, they made a meme. Danny DeVito has a meme. I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. That's what that was. I've been doing this for 30 years, so maybe you should listen and shut up. Oh, and by the way, just for, uh, you know, fun fact, I think Danny DeVito himself is for a Green New Deal. I'm yes, he sure. is. Yeah, he's a pretty progressive dude. You know who else is for a Green New Deal? Uh, somebody who was actually uh, got a chance to speak to children about climate change. And he talked a little differently than Diane Feinstein. You know who that guy was? Oh, it was then Bernie Sanders. This is Bernie Sanders. Some of you may have seen there were some articles in the newspaper recently. In 1987, 
This is Bernie Sanders. 30 years ago, he was on climate change. And here he is talking to kids about climate change. About the destruction of the ozone layer and the fact that the climate, the temperature on Earth may rise a few degrees. Is that significant? Is that just to mean that the summer will be a little bit warm, we'll go swimming another day or two? Okay. Well, not, it doesn't seem significant, but if it gets like hardly any warmer, the polar ice caps could melt and like flood the oceans. Precisely. And flood us. The point being that if you don't think that raising temperature a few degrees is an enormous consequence, <clears throat> you're very wrong. Because it has, it doesn't mean just that, oh boy, I'm assuming a few more days, it means that the type of, of rays that come down from the sun will make us vulnerable to disease, it will have an impact on the polar caps in melting them, and it gets back to the, the point that she made, which is that everything relates to everything else. Okay, when that loudspeaker interrupted us, it relates to us. It relates to the conversation that we have. Everything relates to everything else. The environment is a very, very fragile system of interrelationships. Th and if one ago. thing is disrupted, it'll have an effect on everything else. For example, if climate, if the raising of the temperature has an effect on drought, and I don't know that it will, but it might, and on the growing of food, on the growing of wheat, what does that mean in terms of the way we live? Yeah. Well, if, if the wheat is destroyed, then we're going to lose a lot of food that we eat. Right, exactly. And if, if pollution has an effect on water, what does it obviously mean? Yep. Dehydrate. Well, obviously you can't live without fresh water. And as you know, in many areas of the country, now, now we live right here on the lake, and we have a problem that I'll talk about in a second. But in many areas of the country, now water, you know, we take water for granted. It's not a big deal. But in many areas of the country, the availability of fresh drinking water is a major, major problem, and it is getting worse. That's Bernie Sanders 30 years ago. Contrast that with Dianne Feinstein from yesterday. It's a big difference. Uh, by the way, here's the Sunshine Movement. Senator Feinstein broke her pledge to us to refuse fossil fuel money. And they delivered her a breaking. We just delivered this letter to Senator Feinstein's office detailing her breaking of no fossil fuel money pledge. She signed. She signed. And then she broke it. Well, she probably told them she knows better. She does know better. I'm older. Don't you guys, why don't you shut up? I'm doing things. I don't even know why you showed up here today. I've got everything handled. I know what I'm doing. What kind of a fucking politician says that? Who said, I know what I'm doing. A politician who doesn't want her constituents to come to her office that's right. ever again. That's that's That's, talk about your privilege. You don't even have to listen to your own goddamn constituents. That's the whole, that's your job, actually. Usually in life, like not even in, just in life, when somebody says, I know what I'm doing, it means they, they don't, don't know what they're they doing. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, like, yeah usually that's the case. <laughs> usually. Um, so there you go. If you, I don't, I don't have to sit here and call her a bunch of names because you just saw who she is. She's, well, here come some names. She's soulless. <laughs> she lacks any kind of integrity. She's completely corrupted, bought and paid for. And she's the problem with, she's what's wrong with America. That's why you get Trump. Do you see how desperate those kids are? She's just mean. And she's just mean to like, them. She's just straight up mean. Yeah. Like you couldn't, in a room full of children, say, hey, you know what? We know this is a concern, and I can promise you we're doing everything we can to fight climate change. Like you, like you couldn't just throw that out there for children. Well, that whole thing of uh, you should run for Senate. What yeah. the f that? You know what? You know who said that? Hillary Clinton said that to the Black Lives Matter girl who held up the poster saying, "I'm not a super predator." Mm -hmm. And she's like, "Maybe you should run." Yeah, and you should. She wagged her finger at her. So again, Diane Feinstein, Hillary Clinton, proving that women are can be just as horrible as any man in the world. So that was the big thing when Hillary was running. There were a lot of doughy white guys pro pro proclaiming that women were better than men. They're not. Uh, human beings are human beings. And um, there's lots of horrible... Uh, it seems like what a, 
you know, I, David Feldman used to have this hilarious joke where he would say, you know, I just wish that a woman would be president because when a woman is a president, you don't have war. And then he would just go down, except for every woman who was ever president. And he would name them in the war they started. <laughs> it was so funny. So funny. Um, you know, Jimmy, I just want to say that the idea that Senator Feinstein is standing there with a group of kids and knows somebody's filming her. And, and knows someone's filming her. And she's that's Hey, by the way, you're right. She knows she's being filmed. And that's how she speaks. She condescends to those kids. Um, That's just I, I, that whole to, to me, the, the worst part of it was when she said, well, that's not going to happen. So when the kids know the science. And they say, hey, the sign and the kids are scared because they're kids and they know that this is going to be their life. And scientists who they be who they believe in just told them that their planet may be coming to a catastrophic end and too late to turn around if we don't do something huge, ginormous, if we don't have a solution that meets the problem, a big enough solution to meet the big as big a problem we have. That's what these kids understand. You know who doesn't? Diane Feinstein doesn't understand that. Well, she does. She doesn't care. Right. Because Diane Feinstein is a horrible person. Yeah, she knows she doesn't care. She's already serving her last term. Yeah, she doesn't care. And what's care. the blowback going to be? She's going to get bad press. We do a video on she her. She doesn't she's care. She's still going to have that position. And she's still she's still going to have all of her money. Don't you? And she's a billionaire, by the way. Mm -hmm. She's a billionaire. So don't you want to uh, don't you want to get in proximity to her and get right in her face and go, hey, how, when did you decide to be such a horrible person? I left a voicemail. I left a voicemail and I said, please step down. You've held this state hostage long enough. You did? Yeah. So there you go. There's that's your Democratic leader telling you, hey, don't. So, hey, the scientists say we have to. That's not going to happen. That sound. Who are you? Are you a Coke brother? That's what she sounds like. That's your Democrat. That's your Democrat. And how every Democrat doesn't denounce her. Well, you know why they're not going to denounce her? Because they're just as bad as she is. They take the money, too. They take fossil fuel money. They tell you we can't we can't have we can't have nice things. You can't have health care. You can't we can't fix climate change. That's and they say Trump is the asshole. Right. But but there's Dianne Feinstein. Two four at, at the top of her lungs, an asshole. They say Trump is the cretin. They say Trump is the monster. What do you call Dianne Feinstein? Not only that, she managed to couple it in to being a condescending son of a bitch <laughs> to a bunch of kids. <laughs> she well, made. Do you think those kids? Do you think those kids feel good about their interaction with Dianne Feinstein after that? They they decided to go down and talk to their representative, and she told them, "Shut up! You didn't vote for me. I don't have to represent you." That's what she told them. I, shut up. Listen, I don't have to represent you because you're not old enough to vote for me. What do you what kind of a person does that? The, the worst person in the world, maybe. If Keith Olbermann still had a show on MSNBC, Diane Feinstein would be his worst person in the world today. Jimmy, do you want to call Diane that, right now? Is that is that is that is 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 is, is, is what is uh, you tell me. You, you, you tell me. It's, it, uh but of course, the 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 press will be easy on her. They're not going to treat her the way they treat Trump. There, there was already a thing that came out that was saying the difference in the headlines people were going with, and some were just like Diane taught them a political teaching moment and stuff like that. Oh my God! Well, she did. Oh, she, she did. She, she certainly. Oh, she did. certainly. They she got did. a lesson. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, they yeah. got a lesson in corruption. That's they got a true. lesson in corruption and how your representative <laughs> democracy isn't actually a representative democracy. What Dianne Feinstein was doing was proving we live in an oligarchy. That's what she was doing. Well, I think it's really something to reflect upon when I just saw Cloud Boot Jar. Uh, Cloud Boot Jar. Okay, Cloud Boot Jar just uh, uh, was rude to that college student that was talking about access. Well, she was pleasant to him, but she didn't. She said, no, I'm not going to give you four year college. And she talked for a half hour. And she said, but bottom line is, no, not going to give you free college. <laughs> so he got a lesson. He got a lesson, too. Yeah. A lot of people, when you bump up to a, against a corporate Democrat, you get a good lesson in how horrible your government is and why people wanted Bernie Sanders to actually institute a revolution. And, um, you know, uh, unfortunately, that revolution is not happening inside the Democratic Party. It's just not happening. 
and hopefully Bernie Sanders uh, will win. The, so he will overcome the cheating that they're already probably doing to him, and he will become the Democratic nominee, and then he will overcome the rest of the cheating, and then he will become president, so then people like Dianne Feinstein will start their own party already and get the fuck out of the progressives' party. That's what I hope happens. So the Democratic Party goes back to being the Democratic Party, the party of the worker, workers. And people like Dianne Feinstein and Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer start another party that's for the corporate donors. That's what I hope happens. Uh, but, the, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm still, I still have lots of bruises from the 2016 primary. I don't think, I, I can't allow myself to get excited as I was about Bernie Sanders before. Because uh, they're gonna they're gonna try everything they can to steal it. So, well, it's gonna take the biggest progressive push we can possibly have to be kind of loud enough so that they they can't. It was they can't get you know what? It was super loud at the convention, Ron. And you know what they did? They turned the lights out on us, yeah. and they had sound cannons. Mm -hmm. They turned the fucking lights out on the progressives, and they turned on sound cannons. That's what they do to progressives. I, I, I know. Or they tell them to shut the fuck up and get out. And they, and they tell them to shut the fuck up and get out. Yeah. That's what they did at the uh, the California to State. the nurses, yeah. Yep. Yeah. He told the nurses, shut the fuck up and get out. That was what the chairman of the Democratic Party in California did. Mm -hmm. and, 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 so he, and why did he tell them to shut up? Because he wanted to install a pharmaceutical lobbyist as the chairman of the Democratic Party in California, Bauman. And they did. And guess what Bauman was? Bauman's a predator. Problem is a sexual predator who had to now step down. So he's in the tank for the corporations, the big pharma. He screws over the progressives and he's a predator. That's who the corporatists embraced over a progressive. But Kamal Harris was very outspoken about that because she supports single payer. Oh, wait, she said nothing. I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> she said nothing. No prominent Democrats say that. And now we have Governor Newsom was already promising that we can't do big things. He's already telling us we're not going to have high-speed rail. That was promised to us frickin' 10 years ago. Ten, we can't have it. They have it in Japan, yeah. They have it in China, yeah. yeah. Can we have it here? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Trains are tough. Trains are a hard thing. We haven't we figured it out. We just can't do that here except when we did it all the frickin' time. <laughs> we... <laughs> John Roberts says, left and right must unite for all the time we fuss and fight. The longer it takes to make things right and the longer we fuss and fight, the kings and queens enjoy the sight at Senator Question. Feinstein. Wow, very nice. Wow, that's good. Did he write that himself? I don't know. Did you, John? I think he did. We're announcing our live dates for 2019. We're going to Chicago and Portland, Seattle, New York, all over the country. Go to jimmydorecomedy.com for a link for all our tickets to all our shows. It'll be right underneath there, too. Please become a patron if you like our content and help support the show. You can become a patron for $5 a month, and we give you hours of bonus material. And make sure you're subscribed. They unsubscribe people every day. I'm not kidding. Make sure you're subscribed and click that bell so they give you a notice when we drop a video. It's the only thing we can do to fight back against the bastards. Thanks for your support.